Hi, this is Mark Roth, and this is Mathematics for Social Justice. Today's lesson is going to be on the monkey and the coconut problem. Uh, it was a famous problem in the Saturday Evening Post uh, early in the, ninth, in the 20th century, and it was um, considered again by Martin Gardner in a Scientific American column. So this problem, we have to suspend disbelief because it's a silly problem. It's about five sailors who shipwreck on an island, and they spend the first day gathering a big pile of coconuts. And uh, they make the deal that um, they were going to go to bed and sleep, but in the morning they were going to split up the coconuts into five equal piles, and each one would take their pile. Uh, so during the night, one sailor wakes up and he's paranoid um, that something might happen. He doesn't get his fair share. So he decides to, to get a share right then. So he splits all the coconuts into five piles. And um, there's one extra coconut. So this is a silly party. He apparently gives it to a monkey, as if a monkey couldn't get his own coconut. Um, so then he... so he's. After he gives a coconut to the monkey, he's got five, there's five equal piles. He hides one of the five piles. Then he combines the other four piles and uh, then he goes back to sleep. So the second sailor wakes up, uh, a second sailor, and he has the same idea. He wants to get his share right now. Um, he doesn't know that the first sailor had already done that. So uh, he wakes up, does the same thing. He splits all the coconuts in the five piles. Uh, there's an extra coconut which he gives to the same monkey. He hides one of the five piles, puts the other four piles back together, and he goes to sleep. And this continues. The third sailor does the same thing, the fourth sailor does the same thing, and the fifth sailor does the same thing. So in each case, a sailor wakes up, splits the remaining coconuts into five equal piles. There's one extra gift to the monkey, which he does. He puts it, he hides one pile and puts the other four piles back together. So this happened during the night five times. Uh, the next morning they, they all wake up and, uh, and they split all the coconuts that are remaining. And this time there's no extra coconut to give to the monkey. So the question is, what's the smallest number of coconuts that, could have, that they could have started with uh, that they gathered on the, on the first day? Okay, to solve this problem, we're not going to use any higher mathematics, which will make the problem longer, but it means we can use it in, small, in younger grades. For example, we could do it in middle, middle school probably, uh, maybe even old, upper elementary. So we're not going to use any, any math. Uh, maybe like beyond uh, like first year algebra. Okay, so... Let's think of the possibilities. So the first sailor wakes up and there's one more than a multiple of five. So that means he finds one, six, 11, 16, 21. He finds a, a number of coconuts that ends, ends in one or six. So then, um, let's, say, let's say he found six. So if he give him, gives one to the monkey, and then he returns four out of five coconuts to the pile, we have to do this problem. Four fifths x minus one. So that would be four fifths of six minus one. Four fifths of five would be four. So if the first guy found six coconuts, he would leave four. And then you do the same thing with 11. Uh, you subtract one, which is 10, four-fifths of that is eight. So another way to do four-fifths is to subtract one-fifth. So, um, so after you subtract one, it's 10. One-fifth is two. Subtract two from 10, you get eight. So then you get 12, and then you get 16. And this is a possibility, because it ends in a six or a one. So then, um, since we're, we're getting bigger by fours, 
the next one's going to be 36 and the next one's going to be 56 because we're adding 20 each time to, to get a number that ends in 6. So, so these are possibilities These are possibilities for the second sailor. And these are possibilities for the first sailor. So this is very slow, but we're just looking at possibilities. So then again, if you uh, subtract one and then find four fifths, that would be uh, the same subtracting one fifth of 15 from 15, which would be 12. And then you subtract one and a fifth of 35 is seven, subtract seven from 35, you get 28. And then subtract one, you get 55. Subtract a fifth of 55, which is 11. 55 minus 11 is 44. Then you subtract 1 from 76, you get 75, a fifth of that is 15, 15 from 75 is 60. Now we can see these numbers getting bigger by 16. So the next one's going to be 76, and that's a possibility because it ends in 6. So we have 76. Now remember the numbers were getting bigger by 16. We have to times by 5. 16 times 5 is 80. Uh, so if we add 80 to this, we'll get another number that ends in 6. So 80 plus 76 is uh, 156. Then you add 80 again. So that's 236. Add 80, add 80 again. That's 316. And so forth. So these are possibilities for the third sailor. So I'm starting to see a pattern. If you look at the one, two, three, fourth number here is the first number here. And the fourth number here is the first number here. So maybe this pattern could help us if this pattern persists. So now let's talk about the four sailor. And here we went from, well, let's, let's keep this, keep this same analysis. Let's subtract one, that's 75. And uh, we take away 15 from 75, we get 60. Okay, so then take away one, that's 155. If we divide that by 5, we get 31. So we, if we take away 31 from 155, we get 124. So this would lead us to 124. So when we go from here to here, it's getting bigger by 64. So we'd have to Keep adding by 64 if the pattern continues. So that would be, you yeah, add 164 to this, you get uh, 188. Add 164 to that. I mean, add 64 to that, you get 252. And add 64 to that. Um, We get 316. So we finally get a number that ends with six. So again, we have, we see this pattern. The fourth number here becomes the fourth number becomes the first number here. So maybe we could just assume that next time. So this is 316. Now we can also see a pattern here. These numbers are getting bigger by 
by five. These numbers are getting bigger by 20, which is five times four. Uh, these numbers are getting bigger by 80, which is 20 times four. And so this, if the pattern continues, this would get bigger by 320 because it's four times 80. We add 320 to this, we get 636. Add 320 to that, we get 956. At 320 to that, you get 1276. So these are what the fourth sailor sees. So if the pattern persists, the fourth number here will be the first number here. So these numbers got bigger by, by 5, by 20, by 80, by 320. But maybe we don't even need this list. Let's see what happens if we, if we just do 4 fifths of this. Let's find 4 fifths of 1276 minus 1. So this is what the fifth sailor found, right? And then uh, if it turns out that after he takes his share, if, if this number is a, is a multiple of five, um, we can stop there. We, we don't need any further numbers in this row. So let's do this multiplication. So 12, 1275 divided by five and then times by four. So that would go in two, 255. So 255 times 4. So when you times by 4, you can double twice. So if you double this, you get uh, 510. And if you double 510, you get 1020. So basically, we don't need these numbers. Uh, we're basically done because we found a number that when you take four, when you subtract one and take four fifths, you get a number that's divisible by five. So this is how many coconuts that the sailors found when they woke up in the morning. But the trouble is, this isn't what the question asked for. The question asked for how many um, coconuts that they started with. Okay, so we can erase everything. This is all we need. So all this can be erased. So actually, I shouldn't have erased um, 1276. So we have the situation where we have 1,020. That was how many coconuts that they found the morning when they woke up. The fifth sailor woke up to 1276. And then the fourth person the third person, the second person, and the first person. We just have to do some backwards work. Using algebra. So, if we have four-fifths of x minus one equaling y, now we have to solve this for x. So we want to find what x is equal to. So let's multiply both sides by 5 fourths. So this all cancels. So we get x minus 1 equals 5 fourths y. And add 1 to both sides. That cancels. So x equals 5 fourths y plus 1. So we just have to do the algebra. So times this by 5 fourths and add 1 to get this. So 5 fourths of 1276 plus 1. 
So divide that by 4, you get 319. And 319 times 5 is um, 1595. And then we add 1, we get 1596. So when we times this by 5 fourths and add 1. So if we divide that by 4, we almost get 400. Instead, we get 399. So we get 399 times 5 and then add 1. That's almost 2,000. Uh, but it's 1995 plus 1, so it's 1996. So we divide this by 4. We get 499. 499 times 5 is 2,495. Add 1 is 2,496. Divide this by 4, we get 624. 624 times 5 is 3,120. Plus 1 is 3,121. So this is our answer. So the sailors found this many. This is what the first sailor woke up to. The second sailor woke up to this. The third sailor woke up to this. The fourth sailor woke up to this, etc. And this is how many coconuts there were when they all woke up at the end of the night. So this is the answer to the problem.